All right, we went over the, the aliquot parts of the Russell wave function. The wave function I used as a metaphor is, was mostly an oscillation. <clears throat> but let's, let's bring it in to work on a vibration, like say, for instance, within a molecule or an atom. There, I think the dynamics are the same. The frequencies may change. Um, for instance, here's an elongated atom. This is a, a neutral atom where it's all in balance and it's all functioning. And uh, Keeley used the, the idea that you had positive force, negative force, and a neutral force combined together to hold itself together. <clears throat> These are sometimes pictured as particles. You can look at it as a particle. You can look at it, as, at, at it as a centralization of vibratory force, which is what I prefer, because it's not really a particle. There is no particles anywhere in the universe. But there are these centralizations of vibratory force. So the centropy brings it in and holds it together. Uh, if we allow centropy to take over to become preponderant, then it will collapse to a center, and then it will, through the discords, it will radiate itself apart again. But you you bring it in with centropy to such a point that the entropy starts to have influence, and then there's a balance maintained. So the particle will maintain itself in a state of balance between those two forces. If we should take the entropy and begin to emphasize it in one plane instead of just three planes, then the particle will start to elongate, and it will eventually, once it reaches four times its diameter, original diameter, it will, it will, it will come apart because it, it can no longer maintain its balance. <clears throat> it's gone out of balance, it comes apart, and these contained particles, which are the centralizations of vibratory force, for those who argue about the particle thing. And it comes apart. So we release all that energy that's held there in balance. There's an amazing amount of energy held in, in one atom. So we're going to use the metaphor of a water molecule and uh, show you how we can approach this. So we take the molecule, and we want, the idea is to disassociate it. We want to take the molecule of water apart and release its hydrogen and oxygen. And if we do that properly without, with a lot of care, we'll have a usable energy source. And in the literature, we can find that all of these methods do disassociate the water molecule to one degree or another. You can use vacuum, audible acoustics, inaudible ultrasonics, radio waves, which this guy in Florida was doing this, microwaves, and ultraviolet light. This is what disassociates the water molecule in the ocean to become vapor, which becomes rain, which becomes our drinking water and our hydroelectric power. And they operate on different frequency ranges. Audible is up to like 20,000 hertz. Uh, ultrasonics, Keeley used a frequency of 42,800. Well, that's an ultrasonic frequency, you can't hear it. Uh, radio waves is in the megahertz range, microwaves, gigahertz range, and this is uh, high, ultraviolets, uh, you know, the light frequency, above the light frequencies. So any one of these can manipulate various of these variables in the Walter Russell wave function to cause an elongation of the radius, for instance, or cause an increase in temperature or pressure, which would also would rupture the, the particles. And so the idea is we have to work with these frequency ranges, and that's all it is. You can put whatever name you want on it, but it's still a frequency range. And that gets into Keeley's modes of vibration because a single frequency by itself really doesn't do much. For instance, the, the, the wine glass thing where you sing at it and it shatters itself, that's a single frequency. Um, it's a different domain. Uh, if we get into these higher domains, we're working on three axes of rotation. And so there's his 18 variables times three. If we want to work on these higher ranges at the same time, then it's, it's the 18 times three times whatever the range is here that we're working on. So there's a lot of variables involved in this rupturing process. It's not just vibrating something until it breaks. You can study Keeley for years. And you can do the exact same with Walter Russell's work. And 
it happens that um, if you bring the two together, then they both start making beautiful sense. And, and the two together creates this beautiful mosaic, even more beautiful than either one on our own, because each supports the other. And I have yet to find a place in any of their work that would take away from the other. So it's like a, a symbiotic thing, you know. Keeley came along in the 1880s where he, when he did most of his work, and 50 years later, Russell comes along and says the exact same thing, but he's saying it in a different way. And when you put them together, it's beautiful. <laughs>